So I rewatched the first season of Sex and the City and it is better than I remembered. Usually whenever I revisit this show I go for the third or fourth season because first and foremost I'm a Prada fanatic and Aiden Stan and I find Bunny McDougal the funniest side character. So it has been a minute since I watched season one. Yes, the pilot episode looks completely different from the rest of the show and the mockumentary format can oftentimes be jarring, but the fashion in this season is impeccable. Carrie is yet to look like a toddler who dressed themselves and instead she serves 90s minimalism in its full glory. I mean, most of the times. Charlotte's hair is absolutely gorgeous and it only gets better as the season progresses. Samantha's pencil thin eyebrows make me want to pluck mine and I can easily picture Matilda Jerf in half of Miranda's outfits. But most importantly, watching this show now that I'm more or less the same age as the main characters gave me an interesting perspective on how 30-something women were seen 25 years ago, especially now with the whole millennials don't act their age debate. So in this video, I'll try to summarize the first season of Sex and the City, provide a little bit of perspective and background on the show's creation, and see which outfits aged well and which didn't. And mind you, there will be spoilers for the entire show and the latest reboot. So let's go! The main reason why the pilot episode looks so different from the rest of the season is that it was filmed in June 1997, a year before Sex and the City premiered, which was a standard practice back then. For instance, the pilot episode of The Sopranos was filmed two years prior to its premiere. So that's why in the first episode Samantha's hair is, um, interesting. Carrie's hair is shorter and way darker, her apartment is a totally different place and she types her column on this massive PC computer. And speaking about computers, I love that Skipper's occupation is called website creator and not like a web designer or web developer as we would say today. However, let's not forget it's 1998. There are no smartphones, no social media and the internet used to look like this. Aside from those minor differences, the pilot episode does a great job of fully introducing the show's world. Obviously, we get to meet all the main characters, Carrie, Samantha, Miranda and Charlotte, as well as Stanford and Mr. Big, but also the Manila Blonic shoe obsession and the only alcoholic beverage one can drink in the SATC universe, which is Cosmopolitan. Can you imagine in season 2 of and just like that, Charlotte orders a Cosmo for the sake of good old times and Lily and Rock are like, Ew, mom, no! Aren't you on TikTok? Don't you know that everyone is drinking Negroni Spagliato with Prosecco in it now? God! That would be hilarious. What's really great about later seasons of Sex and the City is that almost every episode has a theme that is explored through each main character. And the themes are often quite deep, like soulmates, karma or grief. However, because the script of the first season was heavily influenced by Cadence Bushnell's articles for the New York Observer, which later were published in her book, the topics are a little bit different. And so many storylines revolve around labeling straight men. The guy who wants to get married fast, the Catholic guy, the guy who won't introduce you to his mother, the guy who only dates models, the guy who wants a threesome. Honestly, I'm surprised that the bicycle guy didn't make a cut. Listen to this. The trouble began almost immediately. First he called to say he was going to be an hour early. Then he called back to say he wasn't. Then he called to say he was going to be half an hour late. Then he called to say he was just around the corner. Then he really was 45 minutes late. And then he turned up on his bicycle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really do not recommend reading those articles. But interestingly, season 1 Carrie is basically Cadence Bushnell 2.0, hence the hair color changed to light blonde. The photoshoot scene mirrors the actual book cover of Sex and the City, and in my opinion, Cadence and Sarah Jessica look almost like sisters, don't you think? 
By looking at Cadence Bushnell's photos from the late 90s and early 2000s, it isn't difficult to notice that she had a thing for cashmere sweaters, minimalistic satin dresses, and fur coats. And once you look at that, season 1 Carrie dresses exactly the same, which admittedly is a very different style from what we would consider a quintessential Carrie Bradshaw look. But I'm here for it. Sarah Jessica Parker looks so good in those elevated basics. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. It's funny that at some point Carrie says something about DKNY dresses not exactly being her style, because some of her most memorable season 1 looks were indeed designed by Donna Karen. First is now absolutely iconic, the naked dress, which on the runway was just a form of undergarment, and later this breathtaking open back satin dress from the same spring-summer 1998 collection. It's giving Courtney Love crossed with that effortless 90s supermodel look. Absolutely stunning. On the flip side, Charlotte's looks were lackluster and frankly forgettable. She does look good in a ponytail and this minimalistic coat though. I really love Samantha's style in this season as well. Again, it's very different from her iconic Mugler and Ungaro power suits, but those are villager-esque figure-hugging dresses make her look so sexy and gritty. Plus, I never realized how stunning Kim Cattrall looks in red. And when it comes to Miranda, well, I was shocked to discover that season 1 Miranda is a Vivian Westwood girl and it made me love her even more. But what's even crazier is that all the main characters repeat their outfits. Carrie is all about her blue coat and leather jacket, Samantha frequently rewears that 80s olive green coat, and wow, it really made me think, am I still watching the same show? Because Sex and the City I know was so often accused and quite rightfully so, of promoting consumerism, materialism, shopping as a form of coping mechanism, and many more. Yet here they are, our beloved characters, wearing the same clothes over and over. I'm not going to dwell on Carrie and Big too much because, honestly, the older I get, the less I care about them. But I'll say this. Season 1 establishes that they are terrible communicators. Carrie gets angry at Big for seeing other women, even though they didn't discuss exclusivity. Big, on the other hand, a couple of times simply tells her he needs more time, especially when she expects some big love declarations from him. But in Carrie's defense, he could also be more vulnerable with her open up and really reveal himself to her. And did you know that originally Mr. Big's character was supposed to be done by the end of season 2? I know, imagine living in a world where we could get a Carrie and Aiden's happily ever after. Actually, there's still hope. And I'm sorry, are we going to ignore the fact that Samantha was hitting on Mr. Big first in the pilot episode? I somehow totally wiped this out of my memory and I'm pretty sure it wasn't acknowledged in the show like ever again? Because it does feel out of character for Carrie to simply let it slip her mind. Or maybe she didn't. Or maybe they should have used it in then just like that in order to justify Carrie cutting Samantha off. I totally see Carrie yelling to her rose gold iPhone 6s and being like, I fire you as my publicist because 25 years ago you flirted with my now dead husband. You forgot about it? Well, I have not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I'm being silly, but isn't Carrie like the queen of overreacting? But also, just to clarify, I'm obviously on Samantha's team. The season 1 couple I am fully invested in though is Miranda and Skipper. First of all, a woman dating a younger guy was quite a bold, boundary-breaking storyline for the 90s. Admittedly, their age difference was only like, what, 5 years? But still, there were 
couple of moments when this season had me like wow they really were ahead of their time and this was one of those moments like i know a lot of you are younger than me and watching this show for the first time knowing it's so edgy and probably expecting euphoria kind of explicit content but really 25 years ago reversing gender roles was still a taboo in tv don't you want to go out with a girl your own age it's got nothing to do with age i i think you're luminous and when it comes to Samantha's and James' storyline, it's a cult classic. It always makes me laugh so hard and their relationship will continue in the second season, so I'll get back to it in the next video. Overall, season 1 of Sex and the City makes Carrie, Samantha, Miranda and Charlotte somewhat relatable. Yes, they lead independent and liberated lives while sipping cosmopolitans and dating all those sometimes very original guys, but they also hang out at Carrie's a lot more often. It makes so much more sense for them to attend a fabulous party one night and then on the next just hang out together while playing poker and eating takeout. They also seem to work out more often than in later seasons, which explains their killer bodies. And we also get one of the rare moments when Samantha is in a scene with just Charlotte. Like, those women are good friends, yet they rarely spend time just on their own. Carrie's non-judgment of Amalita was refreshing too, especially knowing how she'll treat Samantha and her worldwide express guy. But Carrie introduces Amalita with sympathy, she calls her an international party girl and even straight up says she envies her glamorous life. In fact, in my next video I'll be specifically analyzing this episode because there are so many good lines and looks. I'm a citizen of the world! <laughs> At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the ongoing debate about millennials seemingly not knowing that they're aging. The millennials know that at this point in their lives they should be married with kids, why millennials don't act their age and so on and so on. And honestly, as a 32-year-old millennial, watching a show about 30-something women not giving a damn about societal expectations was weirdly comforting, but it also kept me thinking that 25 years ago this storyline was considered edgy and now what this guy did is illegal. We came this far yet we still put so much pressure and expectations on childless and single people. But I don't know, maybe those thoughts are way too deep for this silly escapist show because at its core Sex and the City is a phenomenal comedy which never fails to make me laugh. And on that positive note, I am finishing this video, thank you so much for watching and I'd love to know your thoughts about the first season of Sex and the City. Bye! Wave darling, wave! Ciao! 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 <laughs>